שלום ארס תפארי. הנה ארס ידינוס תפארי נה. הנה ונדם ידן מלט. I am ארס ידונוס תפארי, otherwise known as ונדם ידן of the Latin Jesus Society of His Majesty, His Imperial Majesty, כדמרי הלס אלס, in the name of our Black Lord and Savior, Shua HaMoshiach, Adonenu, otherwise known as Jesus Christos, and commonly called Jesus Christ, our Black Lord and Savior. Now, this is our second parasha, our second Torah portion reading, and this is a continuation of what we have previously laid out, some of the basics, um, namely some of these notes that we have um, shared with our brothers and sisters in this initiation and beginning of this particular cycle of Torah portion reading. Now, Noah, many have asked, when are the different Sabbath portions read? Well, Noah, this year is 2011, and October 29th is when the second Torah portion reading, known as Noah, or Noah, Torah portion of Bamarinya in the Amharic, Noch, when that is read. Now, <coughs> we want to continue with the last part of the teaching and and get a little bit more into this particular sabbatical Torah portion that's called Parsha by the other Jews and by us as a Kufa. Kufa Bamarinya means a part or a portion. So this week's Kufa or this week's portion according to the Kufale, according to the division, concerns Noah, the patriarch Noah. Now, as we have advised the brothers and sisters, and we're composing certain works, um, basic study materials, um, and Wikipedia, the Wikipedia site, if you would look at our Torah portion um, chart, which we call at the website www. LOJSociety.org at that particular website, which is our website. There is the Sabbath, um, the Sabbath uh, house readings, the Sabbatical house readings, or the home readings. And in the Sabbath house, that means in keeping, remembering, and keeping the Sabbath, there are certain Torah portions that are to be read and studied by the family. Now, we can find, we can trace that from the Old Testament and even into the New Testament where the same practice by the early, the true Christiano, which are the early Christians, the same practice was carried out. Um, you can find Hawariya Paulos, the Apostle Paul, um, going and traveling about and teaching different um, Akalio or those who were called out of the then Judaism into the higher way of our Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, and into what's known as the early Messianic, what we call Christian today, then was known as Messianic. Um, those who were the first Christians, actually, m many of them, the majority of them, the followers of our Lord and Savior, were Jews or were Hebrews, and even our Master in Medicine would say himself that salvation is of the Jews speaking to the Samaritan woman, saying to her that ye worship that which ye know not, but we know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews speaking of the tribe of Yehuda or the tribe of Judah. And in this revelation of Rastafari, this is known as Moa Anbesa Zeimanegeda Yehuda, or the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. So Rastafari revelation is important. In, and the Hebrew foundation, who we are as a people. And we've pointed out some books by Rudolf R. Windsor, and now we have um, some freeware and shareware at our website, www.lojsociety.org forward slash study. And there's some PDF um, documents that can be used on your computer, your tablet, smartphone, or other mobile device, and you can read and study it there. But we would advise um, a hard copy is always good. But for now, just to get a, a basic idea of it, um, go to our website. There's some freeware, some shareware there as well. And if you're able to, yah, 
Jah loves a cheerful giver. So support this ministry as you are able to with your prayers, with your um, your free will offerings, donations, um, or any other article and true support towards this ministry. So give thanks for that. Now, <clears throat> let's continue with Noch. Noch. Now, as we mentioned, the Wikipedia site, if you would... Go to our Sabbath house readings. As we said, we're gonna we're seeking to update this because from our previous year, two two or so years of studying this and producing these um these teachings and sharing this with others and then dialoguing about this and growing in this, we've learned a lot and we're able to build on this basic foundation that we have um already put forward on the internet and this is under Sabbath house reading although this is some hard right here it's English inside um, and translations um, we're hoping to expand this with a little more commentary but if you want to get a little more perspective of the Torah portion readings we would advise um, take the, the the last the last name in the in the bracket which is the the common Hebrew or Jewish spelling right there. Um, we get first of all the Amharic, then the Amharic transliteration, then the so-called Jewish or conventional spelling today. So we're now in the second Torah portion. Now what's very interesting is that <clears throat> 2011, as of 2011 right now, in the New York City so-called area, there is a uh, snowstorm that's going on even as we're recording this and even as we speak. Now, what's interesting about this particular snowstorm is that it's very early in in, in the year. Um, it's it's at an earlier time than usually um, they get to see and we get to see these sort of snowstorms. They said one of the news um weather weather guys, weather goyim or weather men said that this is the third time, only the third time since the Civil War that there was snow coming down and such a snowstorm coming down in um, New York City. This is the October surprise this year. Sometimes it's man-made, sometimes it's natural, but this is the October surprise. Now, all of these are more and more signs, I mean, with the floodings in selected places with the earthquakes, with the wars, the rumors of the, of wars, with the whole moral decadence as well and the and the and the gross ignorance. We're living in days of Noah. This is why we find this particular second Torah portion um reading and feeding, especially at this time, to be so interesting. So if you want to get a little more background, and this is some of the free wear suggesting some of the freeware sites. Um, Wikipedia has a very good page up there for each of these 54 Torah portions. And we're seeking to do our part within the studies to um, take some of this freeware off of the internet and provide a kind of a study manual for us to see, well, what does Judaism, quote, unquote, say about these particular Torah portions? And then begin to study it from there. And this is the basic scope and the framework of our study. So we'd like to give you, well, what does Judaism, what is said and what is done at these particular times? And then to, to either um, confirm that as a truth and a reality with um, evidence or facts from our Ethiopic roots, our true Ethiopian Hebrew roots, or um, to point out the errors of that vis-a-vis -vis and based also on our roots. Now, on the Wikipedia site, when you spell it N-O-A-C-H, if you spell it as Noah, N-O-A-H, you're going to go just to the, quote, biblical figure. And the Hebrew perspective of study is, is, more, is more salvic. In other words, like Christ said, for my part, for my part, I, 
well, his match there for my part, glory to God. But, but um, yes, as Crystal said, he said to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, I think it was, that you do err, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. So there's an error in not knowing the scripture. He said to the Samaritan woman, he said that ye worship that which you know not. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. And this is say of Judaism, of the lion of the tribe of Judah. So, the Wikipedia site here for this Torah portion, we broke down the name. We went into a comparison from the, the square Hebrew characters of Isra with the original round characters of the Ethiopic and preserved by the Amharic Bible, the Met of Kedus of Kedemawi Halasalasi, and broke down the name in the last part and the meaning and the meaning of the name as well. Now we're going to expand on that, but first let us just get this this particular parasha, this parasha. What is this parasha or Torah portion reading all about? Well, first of all, it is named, the first distinctive word is the name, the Shem or the Sim of Noah or Noch. And now that is the Hebrew for the English Noah. And it's the third word, the first distinctive word of the parasha. And this is the second weekly Torah portion, the reading and the feeding in the annual Hebraic and the Jewish cycle, the Luni uh, Sola cycle of Torah readings. Now, it constitutes uh, it constitutes Genesis chapter six verses nine to Genesis chapter eleven verse thirty two. Now, Hebrews, we as Hebrews and, and other Jews, they read this on the second Sabbath, the second Sabbath after what's known as the Simchat Torah, the Simchat Torah, the joy or, of the law or the rejoicing, can be translated as joy of the law or rejoicing in the law, and it's generally read during the period of time of October, or November. This year, it is read on the 29th of October, the Sabbath of the 29th of October, 2011, and that is this present time. Now, what does this particular portion, or parasha, or kufu, what does it tell us, and, and, and what does it teach us? Well, first of all, this particular parasha, it, it tells the story of the deluge, of the flood of Noah and, and the flood of the time of Noah and of Noah's ark. Of After that, it speaks of Noah's subsequent drunkenness and the cursing, the cursing of the Canaan or the cursing, what's known as the cursing of Canaan, as well as the Tower of Babel. So, the important subject matters within this particular Torah portion, our second Torah portion known as Noah or Noch, referring to Noah. It tells of the flood, Noah's ark, Noah's subsequent drunkenness, and the cursing of Canaan, and fifthly, the Tower of Babel. Now, these are very, very interesting subject matters. Why? Well, because our Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Adonenu, Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ, he tells us that as the days of Noah were, so will be these, for lack of a better word, last days. But now putting last days into its proper context, it's the last days of the Gentile world dominion. Now, the Gentile world dominion coming from the old Greco-Roman Empire would be what we know today as, for lack of a better word, white supremacy, or what we know as modern racism, or the Anglo-European rulership of the seclorum or of the world system. And, we, and we're seeing the signs of this end as well. Everyone knows that the, the quote, end quote, system, the system, quote, end quote, is broken. This is very clear when people say, well, what can we do to fix it? No one really has a sufficient answer to it, yet 
this system that people recognize is faulty, is corrupt, is broken, is continuing, is continuing to so the effect. So when we look at Noah's time, and we put Noah's time into its proper, as we say, and teach context, we'll begin to notice something very, very interesting, shocking perhaps, and even astounding about the present time that we are living in. So this is why we think this particular Torah portion, especially in this season and in this time that we're living in, on the cusp of so-called 2012, where there is so much speculation and fear and trepidation about, well, what is to come? The Bible says that men's hearts will, will fail them. Men will faint because of fear and, and, and trepidation of what is to come and of the signs that they will see in heaven as well as the signs that will be manifested and revealed down here on earth among the mundane, among men and people. And truly, whether one likes it, doesn't like it, whether one so-called believes in the Bible or doesn't believe in the Bible or whatever one's religious or non-religious, Gnostic or agnostic persuasion might be, choice or decision, one thing we cannot escape. We cannot escape the obvious. You see what I'm saying? The, the obvious signs are there that we're living in strange, comparatively speaking, times. And that something has changed and this process of change is continuing. Now, here's what we find very, very interesting about both this Torah portion and the present time that we're living in. First of all, like we said, in New York City, there is a snowstorm. We're in the midst of it. We don't know how bad or whatever it's going to get, but hey, we're here. And we're witnessing this. And he said this is only the third time since the Civil War that such has happened. Now just think about that for a moment. The third time since the Civil War. The Civil War was, what was it, more than 100 years ago? Was it more than 200 years ago? Was it more than even 200 years ago? You know what I mean? Think about it. It was at least about 200, more, about a little more than 200 years ago, the Civil War. So is this just a 200-year cycle, or is there something much more that is going on? Well, we are convinced and persuaded even scientifically because scientia, the word scientia is what you call scientia. And scientia, go look it up for yourself. Scientia means knowledge. It means knowing. Plain and simple. So when we talk about science, science is knowledge. Therefore, science is gnosis or gnostic or gnosis. And Christ says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Because most live in a state of make-believe. They, they make themselves believe something, even though if they were to find and seek the knowledge of it, the knowledge of it will free them from the superstition, from make-believe, and all the rest. So, brothers and sisters, um, we, we are living in interesting times. So now, as we continue, and we're going to seek to continue this particular Torah portion reading, let us take some good notes and get our pen and paper. Grab our pen and paper. Let's just demonstrate. Usually we like the composition notebooks, but a donation, you know, one donated us some of these, some of these spiral books, so we just use these books, you know, because there's something, there's a, magic may be the improper word because people don't understand really what magic is. They may have a lot of um, superstition and ignorance about the word, but there is something that is mystical or magic about writing. My brothers and sisters, when we advise the disciples and other students of the King of Kings and His Christ to, to journal, have a journal, have a copy book. In fact, have a couple of them, but try to be a little bit disciplined 
about where one puts their notes, you know, in a certain order, so that as they go over them, for example, we wrote down some notes right here for this particular Torah portion, reading, feeding. Sometimes we go through the teaching in the manifest in the spirit, and then afterward we take a moment, even ourselves, to jot down, to journal some of these notes, because they might not seem so important, at the time, but you know in the future where you'd be like, oh, what what was that? Uh, that was, and you're trying to scratch the back of your brain. So now something interesting happens. And when you write, it helps you to remember and recall much better and much more effective. And there's an Ethiopian saying that says, Yamai Sifu Ijoch Ainoru. Yamai Sifu, that which don't write, Ijoch hands that don't write, you might sifu ijoch ainorum. They are not established. They they don't live. They they, they they like don't exist. You know what I'm saying? They they don't exist. So if you don't utilize the the skill and the gift of writing, of journaling, of keeping good notes, it will affect your your study. It will affect your your your, your mind and mental abilities, at least you would not be able to, the, the, the potency or the potentia for learning, recall, and memory will be greatly reduced and impaired. This is just a word to the wise, and once again, we'll, we'll advise this. So grab your pen and your paper, and bring a willing and attentive mind, as well as sacred scripture, the D-I-B-L-E, and as the Dek Amezamorit, the disciples know already or should know, we utilize at this at this beginners and at the basic level the Schofield Reference Bible, otherwise known as the Schofield Study Bible. And that as well, one can download for free to use on their mobile device, whether their computer, their tablet, or, or their smartphone from our website, www.lojsociety.com. Dot .org. So we're going to give one an opportunity to take some of this down because we're going to clear this board right here and we're going to continue with this second um, Torah portion reading and feeding ASAP. Yah willing. So, my brothers and sisters, Shalom Rastafari and stay tuned. More to come. <laughs>